So I'm Dr. Tim Miller Morgan. I'm an extension veterinarian for aquatic species with Oregon State University. And what I'm going to do now is demonstrate how we do a skin scrape and a gill biopsy on a sedated fish. So I have a fish that I've just sedated here. This is a copper rockfish. And if you look at it, you can see it's breathing nice and regularly, but it's non-responsive and it's not and it's it's to a point where it's not going to feel much much pain or anything, not that we're going to do anything particularly painful. Now when we do a skin scrape, what we're doing is we're trying to do a scrape along the surface of the skin, a gentle scrape to get some mucus off and, as, and then any parasites um, that might be on the skin. And there are a lot of ways you can do skin scrapes and if you go online you'll see lots of demonstrations. If you read hobby publications or other trade publications, you'll see a lot of different ways to do skin scrapes. A lot of people recommend using a cover slip like this and I don't tend to use cover slips. What I tend to use is a, a glass slide and the reason I do that is that I'm kind of a klutz and so I'll tend to break the cover slips and cut my fingers whereas a glass slide I won't. Now when you're doing the skin scrape what we're doing is we're scraping the fish along the skin and we're pushing down we have the slide at about a 45 degree angle to the skin and we're pushing down at about the level, the amount of weight that we push down if we were writing with a pencil. And what I like to do is I use the same scrape. I scrape along the lateral line and then I come up dorsally just next to the dorsal fin and then I flip the fish over and I scrape along the abdomen. And you can see you get a fair amount of mucus there. And then we just take a drop of water from the tank or the pond the fish came out of. And then we take a cover slip and pull that mucus back into the drop of water and then just drop it straight down. And it spreads out nicely. And then we go look at that under the microscope. When you have the slide, you want to check it within five minutes because what we're looking for is movement under the scope. And most parasites will cease to move in about five minutes. So you want to evaluate that right away. So the other thing that I do really quickly, I'm going to put the slide here, is I will come in and do a gill biopsy on the fish right away and put it on the same slide. And the way we do a gill biopsy is we, um, we use what are called, I like to use what are called suture removal scissors. Now you can use cuticle scissors or other small scissors, but you don't want to have any sharp tips because if the fish moves while you're in there, you don't want to poke anything. So you, what you can see is when we take our biopsy, it forms a little cup that holds the gill, a piece of gill right there. And all we're taking is one to two millimeters. So what I do is I come in, I get my fish, <clears throat> I lift the operculum up and see the piece of gill that I want to get. And then I pull out and I come right in here and I just do a little snip. And you see that? It's right there. And then I take a little drop of water and I put it on the slide. And then I just get the gill biopsy right on the slide. Then I take another cover slip and just drop it down. And that spreads out the gill biopsy right there. And then I go look at it under the scope. Again, within five minutes for the same reason we mentioned before. You want to see movement. This also allows you to evaluate the gill architecture <clears throat> and any changes that are going on in the gill. Now, that little piece is not going to hurt the fish at all. Fish blood clots very quickly so that it's, it's going to be very easy to, to, um, for the fish to recover and, it, and that will grow back. If there's any bleeding at all, what you can do is just take your finger and use direct pressure on the gill where you're seeing the bleeding, just like you would on yourself. Now we have our sample and now we would go look at it under the scope, but you never want to leave a sedated fish by itself. So what I'm going to do now is show you how to recover the fish and uh, then we'll go and look at the, the uh, biopsy under the scope. So in a tank like this, what I can do is I can just do a quick water change. This tank, the water is coming in from the bay, being filtered and then going right out to the bay. So I don't have to worry about drug getting into the tank. So what I'm going to do is just change the water. 
Now, if you didn't have that capability, you just could have another tote set up with fresh water without drug in it and an air stone, and you could just move the fish in there. And we're always watching the respirations on the fish, making sure that it's breathing well while we're doing this. And this fish is still breathing very regularly. But what we want to do is we don't want to leave the fish until it can maintain what we call sternal orientation, which is it can keep itself oriented in the water column with its upper body facing up towards the surface of the water. Now, this fish, if you watch it, it's breathing, still breathing very shallowly, but it's still breathing fine. Now, if we want to speed up this process, Another thing that you could do is you can actually take the fish out of the tote and take the tote out of the water and you can do what's called ram ventilation. Now you can't do this in all fish species, certainly not with sharks, <laughs> but you can put your finger right in the edge of the mouth there in koi you can do this with and then you can just move the fish very slowly in a figure eight pattern in a forward direction. What that's doing is ramming oxygenated water across the gills. The other thing is that a lot of times if a fish isn't, isn't respiring or stopped the operculums, the gill cover have stopped moving, what will come back first is the jaw tone. So if you have your finger in here gently, you'll actually feel the fish gently um, biting on, your, on your, your finger. So of course, if they're fish that have serious teeth, you don't want to do this. <clears throat> but I can feel the fish sort of slowly biting on my finger. The other thing to keep in mind is a lot of people are, get very concerned about sedating fish. And there are, there are risks. I don't want to minimize that. And if a fish is very sick and you try to sedate it, it may not survive being sedated. But in general, a fish, even if it stopped breathing for up to 10 minutes, if you work aggressively with this kind of ram ventilation or even putting oxygenated water through the mouth gently, um, you can, it's, most fish will actually recover after a period of time. You just have to be patient. But what you need to understand is that sedation of any animal, there is always an inherent risk, and you take on the responsibilities associated with that risk when you decide to do this with fish. So what I'll do is I'll stop periodically and see how the fish is doing. And oftentimes it's easier to turn them over and look at the respirations. So you can see there's a little, little bit of respiration going on there. And what I'll do is I'll keep working with the fish until it can keep itself oriented like this. If the fish is in a tank where there's a lot of aggression, you want to make, might want to wait until it's completely recovered before you put it back. So now I'm, I'm I'm going to let him out now, and you notice he swims out. You can tell he's still a little woozy, but able to swim and orient himself in the tank. And now what this fish will do is it'll probably go and sit on the bottom and just rest for a while. But you can see it's able to orient, and we, want it, we don't want to let him go until we can, they can at least do that. And again, if it's a tank where there's some real aggression issues, then we want, want to wait until they're completely recovered. So that's the procedure. Again, we want to always be deliberate, but careful with the fish. Don't do anything that can injure them. When we're taking our scrapes and our samples, we're not taking large pieces, we're taking small pieces. When we're doing our skin scrapes, we're pushing down just like we would if we're writing with a pencil. And then we want to make sure when the fish is in the tote that there's plenty of aeration and that we're patient. The fish may take a while to recover. Some fish may take longer than others. As long as the fish is breathing regularly, even if it's slow, there's really, you're okay. But you need to remember that. And if a fish ceases to breathe for a little bit, don't worry about it. Just take it out of the anesthetic solution and start recovering it in fresh oxygenated water.